Hey guys, it's Wayne from Sling Pilot Academy. Welcome to our pilot training series. Today we'll be covering programming, tracking, and intercepting VORs. We have two Garmin devices. This one right here is called the G3X touchscreen, and then this one over in the middle, this is the GTN650. The GPS in the G3X touch is not uh, certified for instrument flight, so if you're on an instrument flight plan, uh, we have to use the GPS on the GTN650. So basically, we're gonna take the data from this box and we're gonna bring it in here. So if I press the HSI like this, uh, you can see our flight plan source and basically our GPS is it's being pulled in from an external GPS. In this case, it is the GTN650. Now, if for whatever reason um, this was either broken or your aircraft didn't have a GTN650, we could switch this by just pressing this button over to internal GPS. And now you can see that this button CDI source is now unlocked. And right now it's set on VOR and we're pulling in our VOR nav on the HSI. If we wanted to switch that to GPS, we just hit this button. It now says GPS and you can see on the HSI, it now shows that we're displaying the GPS. We'll put it back to VOR. And if we wanna go back to the GTN650, we'll switch this again to external. So the first thing you're gonna do, Will, is uh, make sure that the appropriate VOR frequency is into the GTN650. So if you go ahead and press that knob to reveal the nav frequencies, you can see uh, LAX is already in our standby frequency, so that's, that's what we change. So you'll go ahead and touch the top frequency to switch them. Now you can see LAX is our active, right? And we're gonna be tracking this using the G3X touch. Right now you can see it's on uh, GPS mode, so we're gonna have to flip that over to VOR mode. So how we do that is we go ahead and hit the default nav on the, uh, this is the GTN 650. We're gonna hit the CDI button. It's gonna change the CDI to VOR mode. Now what we're gonna do is uh, identify the frequency and make sure that uh, we're actually listening to the LAX VOR and that it's actually in service. How we do that is pull up the audio panel. We'll hit uh, the GTN that way. And then we gotta make sure that it has this little ID thing. And we also wanna look at the Morse code on the map. So here's our Morse code right here and you've got it on yours as well. You can turn up the volume by turning this here. Volume knob. That appears to be accurate. Okay, so we can turn this volume back down and then this button right here, it says push ID. So you actually have to make sure that this ID thing is, is uh, showing as well. So we can turn that off now because we're done IDing it. So if we look at our VFR sectional chart here and we see this one, two, three radial coming out of LAX. So since we're gonna be outbound out of LAX, we're gonna go ahead and set the one, two, three radial onto the course for the old school OBS knob. And that's gonna reveal on our uh, HSI that we're currently left of course. So Will's gonna go ahead and start a right turn to intercept that course. And now the easy way to do it on the G3X HSI is to bring our wind correction line, this dotted line. We're gonna line that right up with the front of the needle like Will's doing right now. And uh, the wind correction makes it really easy to pick a heading that's gonna be the best intercept angle for that needle. And as he continues to fly this cur course, that needle's gonna slide in closer and closer. When I say the needle, I'm talking about this little interior piece right here that moves left and right based on how far off course you are. So as he continues to fly this course, he's gonna, um, that needle's gonna slide in and he'll continue to keep that dotted line stationary on the front of the needle, which is gonna require him to gradually, ever so gradually turn to the left as that needle comes in. And eventually that needle's gonna be lined up with the two outer portions of the VOR course. And as long as you keep that dotted line, wind correction line, lined up with the rest of the needle, you'll continue to stay on course. Oftentimes in our flight plans, we go direct to a VOR station or we use VOR stations as our waypoints on the uh, VFR flight plan. For IFR flying, basically the large majority of IFR flying that we do, we're gonna be tracking airways. And uh, it's important to be able to set up those airways because most of them are based off of VOR headings and VOR courses. So that's why it's important to understand VORs, how to program, intercept, and track a needle. And as you can see that needle's now coming closer towards the center and Will's gonna get ready to start turning our air aircraft to the left. And um, basically in a no wind condition, once that needle's lined up, you would be flying a heading of one, two, three to stay on a course of one, two, three. But because of different winds at altitude, oftentimes we need to fly a different heading that's slightly different than our VOR course. As you can see now, we're more or less lined up with the VOR course. We're just gonna continue to fly this course and we can even show where we are on the map. We're just a little bit to the left of course and as represented by this line here, Will's gonna continue to line this thing up, but 
Oftentimes, as you get farther from the VOR station, it's we're not necessarily as accurate as you would be, say, on a GPS map. And uh, that's tracking a VOR. So overall do's and don'ts for a VOR in tracking and intercepting. Probably the most important do and don't is to make sure you understand whether you're flying outbound from the station or inbound to the station. So in this example, we're flying outbound from LAX. If we zoom out the map, we can see the VOR compass rows here for LAX. But we're flying outbound. So in that case, we program the VOR to the outbound course or the radial. There's 360 radials in a VOR. Now, if we were flying the same airway but inbound to LAX VOR, what we would do would be program the reciprocal into this course field. So an easy way to get the reciprocal is what they call the plus two, minus two. Basically, we're going to add 180 to this, but we're going to do it in a way that you don't have to be a mental mathematician to figure out. We're going to take that one, two, three. We're going to add 200. That equals 323. Now we're going to subtract 20. So the reciprocal course that we would program would be 303 if we were flying inbound to the LAX VOR. But since we're not and we're flying outbound, we have the one, two, three in there. All right, so to further exemplify that example where we're going direct to a station, we have a 202 radial here. There's an airway. We're going to go ahead and intercept this airway inbound to Seal Beach. First thing we're going to do is switch the VOR to Seal Beach. So I'm going to look up the VOR here. It says 115.7. So Will's going to enter that into the system. And he can either type that in like he's doing now, or he can use the knob to change the standby frequency like he's doing now. So he'll go 115.7 with the knob. The big, the big knob turns the first three digits, and the small knob turns the secondary digits. And then he'll hit the top one to switch it. And he'll go ahead and confirm the uh, Morse code on the VOR. So we'll pop into that audio panel, just like he did last time. We'll make sure we have Seal Beach in this primary. We'll make sure it says ID. We'll turn that up a little bit so that people can hear it. And we'll zoom in on that Morse code field. Sometimes it helps to zoom using this little knob. Nice. Perfect. So it looks like that's an accurate representation. So we'll go ahead and set up the inbound course now. So if we have a radial of 202 outbound from the station, we'll do that simple minus 2 plus 2 or plus 2 minus 2. It really doesn't matter which one you do as long as they're opposite. So 202 minus 200 equals 002 plus 20 equals 22. So he'll go ahead and enter that 22 or 022 inbound course. So now we have a really good idea of a nice heading vector we can give him to intercept it. So what do you think, Will? Maybe 350? Three, four, zero, something like that. That'll work. So he's gonna go ahead and put in the heading into his bug. And he's gonna go ahead and start a turn to intercept this radial. You know, it's about a 30 to 45 degree intercept angle because we don't wanna be so steep going straight towards the VOR needle that we're gonna fly right through it. And we don't wanna be so shallow that we never actually end up intercepting the needle. And so we're gonna be flying this inbound to the Seal Beach VOR. So Will's going to go ahead and call SoCal Approach right now and pick up uh, radar flight following. We'll just listen to him do that. SoCal 135 with Sea Tango, just south of the east end of the brake wall with a VFR request. 135 with Sea Tango, Slug 0226, they request. Hold over Seal Beach 3000, 5 with Sea Tango. 5 with Sea Tango, radar contact, you all south, Long Beach, maintain 3000, altimeter 3001. 01, 3000, 5 with Sea Tango. That needle starting to come in, so Will's going to start a nice, mellow turn to the right. So he's got our course nice and lined up, and we're going to be proceeding inbound to the station. If we're looking to get the nearest VOR, which we're very close to the Seal Beach VOR right now, we'll just go ahead and hit that nearest button, and we'll hit the VOR field, and we'll pick the VOR. And we're showing that it's uh, just about two miles heading 025, right? And then if we want to, if we want to add that to our flight plan, all you need to do is hit the direct button and activate. And that sets it up on our flight plan. And it shows up here at the top of the G3X how far we are, what our estimated time of arrival and estimated time en route. There's a lot of features on this uh, glass panel aircraft that we like to use. So as we get closer, we're showing about one miles from the station now. We're at 3,000 feet. As we get a little bit closer, this needle's gonna start to swing to the left or to the right because it's having trouble determining just exactly what radial we're currently on. And we've got this little waypoint field blinking showing that we're getting close. And eventually what we're gonna see is this arrow flip to the other direction. This arrow is based, there it goes. We don't wanna chase that needle. Here it comes back in. The needle flipped and now we're showing that we are flying outbound or from the station on the 022 radio because we just flew just through the station. 
All right, what am I forgetting? Do I need anything else, Matt, about the ORs? I think that's it. That was a lot.